Hi, my name is Kristen Jankwitz Schrock. I'm an author and a DMC designer. If you've checked out our first introductory video on DMC's newest specialty thread, the memory thread, then I'm sure that you're already in love with the product. In this video, we're going to explore some more advanced shaping and placement techniques. This is a beautiful cake design. The stitching on its own looks really lovely. But we've also added some great details and fine designs that really stand on their own. Now we're lucky enough here to have a pattern as a guide. And there are a couple ways that we can go about accomplishing this look. We're going to try to do one of these fine rose designs. What I'm going to do is take a shuttle of my memory thread and kind of estimate how much I think I'm going to use. This doesn't have to be an exact science at all, but I'd say use a little bit extra. I'm going to snip a length of it with my scissors. Now, since it's just surface work that we're doing with our memory thread, I can really lay it right on top of the pattern that I'm following. What I'm going to do is take my tweezers and just start by bending the memory thread back a little bit on itself. It's gonna be tucked away. Then, using this picture as a guide, I'm going to start wrapping the memory thread around in a really detailed swirl. And once you get it started, then you can just use your own fingers. I like to sort of lay it down on the pattern so that I can get really exact sizing. To finish it off, I'm just going to clip the excess memory thread and use my tweezers once again to just tuck that piece behind. As you can see, the memory thread stays put really well on its own. But you can use some glue. Tacky glue is wonderful. And just with a dot, I'll put some on the back and it'll hold my rosebud perfectly in place. Well, those were pretty easy designs to follow. As you can see, it's really easy to work with. If you mess up at all, you can go back and straighten out your memory thread again and just simply reshape. You don't really ever need to throw it away. Um, but now we're going to look at the base of this cake. And this could be a little bit more complicated for sizing, so I'm going to show you another technique that I like to use. I use this embroidery tracing paper. I've already cut a piece of it. It's about the size that I need. And I'm simply going to lay it on top of my design. Then you can take a pen or a pencil, whatever you've got around. And if I want to perfectly copy this design, I'm just going to use my pen to go over that swirl, and now I've got the base of my cake. See how easy that is? There's no free hand drawing at all. There we go, but that gives me a really excellent guide. Then I'm ready to set this aside and work on my real stitched project here. I'm gonna lay my tracing paper down over the top, so now I know exactly where I want my memory thread to be on my project. And I like these little clips, but you can use just a needle that you've got around to hold your tracing paper in place, whatever you've got handy. Okay, that looks good. The next step is to take some of this beautiful gold memory thread and do the same thing. I'm going to kind of guesstimate the length that I need, clip with a little excess, and sort of lay out on top of my pattern. Now I'm going to use my jewelry tweezers once again to get that really tight, nice swirl at the end. Okay, and then using your tweezers and your hands, you can kind of lay it out on top of your pattern. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the other end. Once again, you know, you can decide what works for you. You can use your hands a lot, but for some of these fine details, it's just nice to be able to get in there with some tools. And once again, since these are jewelry tools, they're specifically made to work with wire. Once we've got that shaped, going to lay it down on the pattern. And now, th this is where it's kind of fun, we're going to tack it directly over the pattern so that we make sure that there's no variation. It follows exactly the way that I want it to look when it's finished. So I've got a coordinating piece of floss already threaded into my embroidery needle. DMC makes floss that matches every color of the memory thread so that you can find a perfect match and it's totally hidden when you're couching your work down. So to begin, I'm going to lay one side down over my pattern and just begin couching from the back. So we're gonna do one stitch up and one teeny little stitch down right over the memory thread to hold it in place. And you really only need stitches about every quarter of an inch or so 
along the length of your memory thread. But you can see how beautifully the floss perfectly blends in so it's totally hidden. No one will know how you attached anything. Now to finish, I'm just going to tack down the tail of my floss, snip with my embroidery scissors. Now we discussed the memory thread is so wonderful and forgiving, so I can move this around if I need to, make any adjustments. And if you've done enough stitches, if you've got a really long piece of memory thread that you've couched down, then you've already caused a lot of perforations. If not, you can go back in with your stiletto or the same needle that you just used, and you can make some additional holes along your memory thread. Then, once you're ready and you've done your completed pattern, it's so easy to just rip the DMC tracing paper away and voila, it's perfectly attached. Now another thing if you don't want to take the time to couch down the whole strand of memory thread is to once again rely on your tacky glue. I'm going to do that with these flowers. I'll simply put a dot on the back and I can tack all of my little details down. So it's really up to you if you'd like to use the embroidery floss or tacky glue or a combination of each. The wonderful thing about being able to attach your memory thread in so many different ways is that it can really cross over into a wide variety of crafts. Here I've demonstrated on some needlework. And as you can see, once again, it looks really beautiful. The memory thread adds so much texture and dimension to the canvas. Even here, they stand on their own. While there's not a flower stitched behind it, they really give you the idea of a three-dimensional flower. It also adds a lot of texture here. Don't you get the sense of the wrought iron? This is another beautiful storefront. Using this technique, we've used two strands of memory thread in different colors and twisted them together and makes a really cool looking purse handle. Here we've used two colors. On this ornament, we've used three. We've tacked it down to the outside of the ornament and also made a hook so that we can hang it. Do you recognize these little rosebud swirls from our project? In addition, it looks really lovely on quilting. It makes a great outline. It really separates the differences in fabric and accentuates your design. See how we cut away from the fabric here and you can bend and shape these petals. It makes a really incredible work of art. This is another quilting example. While it's not three-dimensional, the two-dimensionality is really outstanding here. You can see all of the details of the feathers and it was so quick and easy to bend and shape the memory thread that you didn't take all of this time doing the detail but rather you really accentuated with this bright memory floss and you have some beautiful contrast in color. And it really separates your beautiful stitches from the canvas behind it. This pumpkin pops out so much it looks like it's lit up. Using the same techniques that we discussed, I really love to make words. The memory thread is absolutely perfect for personalizing any of your work. You can write out a word, lay your thread over it, couch it down, and then tear away your tissue paper. These are just a few examples of the many, many ways that you can use memory thread on all of your craft projects. For more inspirational ideas, you can visit us at the website, dmc-usa.com. Happy crafting!